Welcome to this video in which we are going to review the chapter 26 of the book of Computed on Communication Networks. This, this chapter refers to the integration of software defined radios. My name is Javier Acevedo and today what we are going to review together is an introduction to the software defined radios. We are going to see where are the main concepts behind software defined radios then we are going to see how we can really program SDRs we are going to review the hardware and software stacks then I'm going to explain to you how we can integrate SDRs into the Cobnet MO and finally we are going to grab everything up by using with two practical examples the first about a transceiver that uses OFDM modulation and the second about the implementation of a tunnel protocol so what is an SDR? an SDR is a radio in which some or all the physical layer functions are software defined here what we have is a data source and we want to transmit this data source using an um, electromagnetic medium so we require of a digital communication system to transmit this data and every digital communication system is composed by different building blocks one of them is the coding and uh, then other, uh, another is the channel model that we are going to use to do this transfer then we are going to select the modulation and finally we have an analog processing building block these four blocks that we see here we can implement them using software and then our baseband signal can be multiplied with our carrier signal in order to produce a radio frequency signal that can travel in an electromagnetic medium the same happens here in the receiver in the receiver what we have is different building blocks when our radio frequency signal arrive in the analog processing we remove the uh, carrier signal and we obtain back our baseband signal then we do an analog to digital transformation and all these physical layer functions can be implemented in software to obtain the data back here so now let's go to evaluate or let's go to review how we can use um, software and hardware in order to program SDRs but, so basically what we have here is a um, host computer it can be a laptop or a desktop computer and this desktop computer communicates with the SDR via a uh, Ethernet interface it can be Ethernet it can be also USB but in the case of our hardware that in this case is the ATOS Research N210 we dispose of one gigabit per second Ethernet cable and here what we have is that in order to implement software into the SDR we have to write an application that normally is a high uh, level application and every application is written into a program that can be an open source program such as Gainu Radio or it can be a proprietary program such as LabVIEW, MathWorks that develops MATLAB and Simulink or any other custom program that can be used to implement a um, physical layer function in order to communicate between our host computer 
and the hardware itself or the SDR itself will require of a driver, a hardware driver or a hardware interface. In the case of the ETHOS Research N210 or other ETHOS Research devices, we employ the UHAD. The UHD stands for USRP Hardware Driver. The USRP is the name that ETHOS Research gives to their SDRs and with this driver what we can do is to establish the communication between the host computer and the SDR and basically the host computer can be running can run any operating system such as Windows, Linux or Mac OS or even embedded Linux. In the SDR part, when the, the data is coming directly to the USRP or the SDR, we find that every SDR, or at least the ones that we are using here, the N210, is composed by an FPGA that normally is programmed using Berlioc uh, hardware, uh, hardware development language. And, the, and we also find inside the SDR some digitizers and a radio frequency front end to transmit the signal. Now, in this stage, let's going to uh, check how we can connect our SDRs to the Cobnets MO. To do this, what we basically need in this moment is to refer to our Git repository. In this Git repository, the viewers this video can find all the information that it requires to install the Copnet demo and to run their applica its applications. So we require of two programs. The first is background in the version 2. v2.2.5 and VirtualBox that it can be the version 6 or any other version that we have. In this case we just refer to the background website and to load, download this program or if the same happens here with the VirtualBox. In my case I am going to open a terminal. I'm going to use so I enter into the Comnet emu repository and here let's going to check what is the version of the Vagram program. As you can see here the tile version that I have is the version 2.2.5 but the last version as we can see here in the website is the 2.2.9 and in the case of the VirtualBox, I have the versions 5.2.34 that I basically install by just typing to the apt install VirtualBox, VirtualBox, and then it does the installation for you. Now that I am in the Cutnet demo, what I have to do is to execute it. So by using background. We are going to type on background app copnets mo and we are going to execute this command. It's going to take not that longer since I have already done the compilation and as you can see right here it says to you that everything went okay and basically we just need to access to this copnets mo a virtual machine or emulator itself. We can see this in the virtual box manager that the program that the virtual machine is running. So I'm going to type on background SSH cutnet emo. Good. In this stage what we are going to is another Cobnet emo directory. We have access to it 
and what we have to do now is to access to the application directory and in the application directory you are going to find different applications that we have developed for the Cobnet emulator in our case we are going to enter into the software defined radius application and in this directory where you are going to find is our is three files and one directory, the examples directory. If we review what is inside the setup, what we are going to find here is this command. We are going to define the containers and we find this command. By default, when we check the Docker documentation, the traffic from the containers connected to the default bridge network is not forwarded to the outside world. So basically what we have to do is to enable this traffic. And to do this, what we require is to configure the Linux kernel to allow IP forwarding between the Cobnet demo and the SDR by typing this command. So this is the command that we include here in our setup file and with this command what we have done is to basically enable the IP forwarding. So what we are going to do now is to execute this file And now that we have executed this file, basically, uh, well, if you, if the viewer wants, can review what is inside the Docker file. What we have here is basically all the instructions for the GNU radio installation and the driver, the USG. UHD installation. It's going to require some time because there are so many files on directories and repositories to be installed but uh, after it is we make sure that this has no longer problems and everything runs smoothly and without any longer problem now that we have done this we can continue with the practical examples let's go into a star with the transceiver that uses an OFDM modulation. So before going forward, what we have to do is or is to review really, really quickly what is OFDM. So the orthogonal frequency the uh, uh, division modulation, basically what it does is to take one a bit of it, input the bit string input and then what it does is to split it into orthogonal subcarriers then the modulation consists of an um, the inverse of the fast uh, Fourier transformation and then what we do is a conversion from the digital to the analog domain then this baseband signal is multiplied with a carrier signal to produce a radio frequency signal that can be transmitted in the electromagnetic medium. In the receiver side, we receive that signal. Then what we do is to remove the carrier frequency, the carrier signal, to recover back our baseband signal, and then we do again a conversion from the analog to the digital domain. We pass this baseband signal through an FFT and then by using an FFT detection, what we can do is to detect uh, the symbols of the that are received and then by using a simple demultiplexing, we can recover our signal back. So now the question is how we can really implement this using the uh, gain radio. Once again, we have our source, input source in the transmitter. And then we have our OFDM block that is going to be in charge of the mapping of the input signal. And then we perform the 
inverse IFT. Then we have two additional blocks. The first is a rational sampler, and then again and a multiplication constant to adjust our gain and then we transmit the signal using the USRP sync that is the block that is used to refer to the uh, hardware itself and we have here finally a time sync in order to see this the modulated signal the signal that we are transmitting Uh, looks like this. Now in the receiver side what we have is uh, the USRP source then we have again a rational resampler and a OFDM receiver in which we apply the FFT's operation and we obtain a uh, constellation detection and finally, what after passing through all these uh, physical layer functions, we store the receive data into a file, and we display the receive signal using a time sync. So now, what we are going to do is how to implement this into our example. So. If we enter into the examples directory, we are going to find other two directories, the modulation and the tunnel. So as we are reviewing the modulation example, there's going to access to this directory. And as you can see here, it is we have the transceiver OSDM that contains the transmitter and the receiver functionality in the same file. Then we have the file that we want to transmit. This is the file that we want to receive and here we have the docker compose so basically what we have to do is to run a container that is going to execute the GNU radio and inside GNU radio we are going to execute this python file that contains the functionality of our physical layer functions so how to execute this we are going to use docker compose app but before doing this, let's go to quickly review what is inside this Docker file. What it does is to have access to the directory that we have has called Kenny Radio Files. Um, we create this directory, we have access to this directory, and basically then we execute this file. In the case, this is the SDR R1 that is going to transmit the signal. Uh, we do basically the same for the SDR2 that is going to receive the signal. We create the directory, we create one container that is going to create one directory, it's going to have access to that directory, and then it's going to finally execute that that uh, transceiver OFDM.py file. So uh, we are going to use Docker Compose app. And what it does there is to execute our container. So now all is going to use a different app, a different um, terminal, and let's going to have access to that terminal. And to have access to that terminal, we are going to use uh, the background SSH copnets emo in order to have access again to the uh, copnets emo uh, virtual machine now that we are inside the virtual machine we go really quickly through all the to the modulation example to execute To execute the container so what we can see here if we write docker ps all we are can see all the containers that have been executed 
and it says that we have one container that is up and in order to have access to that container what we are going to use is this command that is written directly into the tutorial that uh, into the book sorry and basically what we have to write down is exec it we are going to tell the name of the container and then what we do is to write the argument for having access uh, where this thing is going to, where the, this thing is going to be executed so we are in this sdr1 and then by just executing the file we can see that our transmission is taking place if we stop this execution while we uh, we evaluate or we check what is in the receive file it says that it's not a uh, find it so let's going to use vim and then let's go to evaluate what is inside there or so let's go to start nano and then we can have access to the editor where we can see what is inside the rx and as we can see here, we are seeing we are coming we are coming we are coming we are coming that is exactly what we have transmitted. We have transmitted we are coming, so that's what we have sent. And as we are repeating many times the receiving of this uh, message so basically in the receiver file what we are doing is to receive many times this where connect stream so with this we finalize this first ex practical example and um, in the second part of this tutorial what we are going to see is how to implement a tunnel protocol using both USRPs or SDRs. Thanks a lot for your attention.